In continuation with my yesterday introductory lecture, I will try to finish it today very quickly but a little late, uh, less fast. Uh, in your orientation program, I was silent when some of you were asking about which book should be read for preliminary understanding, the critical minimum, the ABC of sociology. Yesterday I tried to give you less controversial books. Then one person asked me yesterday, what is wrong with Peter Burgers an invitation to sociology? There is nothing wrong with him. The only thing is that he is a Durkheimian and he collaborated with another person, Luckman. Uh, Berger and Luckman have, called, uh, have a book called Social Construction of Reality. And uh, in case you are not familiar with that book, uh, it will give you a partial picture of uh, sociology. Secondly, uh, Berger himself understood the problem with his book and then he wrote a complementary volume that is called Sociology Reconsidered. This he wrote with his wife or companion, Bitty Berger. Therefore, Berger and Berger, they had another book in addition to an invitation to sociology that is called Sociology Reconsidered. And then they came up with their classic, The War Over Family. Therefore, I do not want to give you a biased view in favor of uh, Imail Durkheim and his school, although I like him. Uh, the most authentic introductory book used to be a book which is no longer in use these days and uh, it is very difficult to find in uh, you know hard copy. The book was written by a person called Harry Elmer Barnes, H. E. Barnes. And from 1917 to 1949, an introduction to the history of sociology was the best introduction available in the world. But then something happened. And that something is very, very interesting. Therefore, I wanted to share with you. Uh, there was another person uh, whose name you must have heard, Talcott Parsons. Uh, he was born in United States of America, but he was educated in Germany and he was fascinated by a politician who was not regarded as a sociologist when Parsons was studying in Germany. He was regarded as a very famous politician and jurist lawmaker. His name is Max Weber. Uh, today he taught in compulsory courses and I will also teach him. But there are two Webers, Max and Alfred. Alfred, Alfred Weber was regarded as an academician even he even in his lifetime. But Max was not a sociologist, he was not even an academician, he was a hardcore politician. Like Karl Marx was a hardcore politician uh, and he participated in the French Revolution of 1848. But then his revolutionary party was defeated and uh, he was uh, forced to leave France and came to England uh, where for 40 years he spent uh, his time in the library, mostly lonely, and then he published his one book. He published only one book in his lifetime 
that in capital volume 1 but uh, it was uh, not published in the English language it was published in uh, the German language and it, it was called Das Kapital D-A-S Das K-A-P-I-T-A-L Capital when you write in English it becomes C-A-P-I-T-A-L therefore do not get confused when you encounter capital with K and capital with C. Both are the same book but in two different languages. One of your teaching assistants, Suraj Sankar, is a student of German language and two, uh, two other research assistants who will be assisting me, uh, they are senior PhD students of the center, namely Dipti Rekha Das and Sophia Nisam. Keep in touch with them on WhatsApp group. Now, uh, I was trying to tell you that all the major sociologists and their major works emerged after a very important critical event in their native country or in the world history. I did try to discuss about Renaissance, Reformation, two reformations. Uh, the Protestant Reformation and, and then the Catholic Counter uh, Reformation, two revolutions, industrial revolutions, 16th century industrial revolution in Spain, Portugal and Netherlands, and then second industrial revolution in uh, uh, England, that is United Kingdom and France. The major difference between the two industrial revolutions was the use of metal as the industrial product. In the case of the first industrial revolution in Spain, Portugal and Netherlands, the metal which was used was copper which is a costly matter in comparison to iron. Iron was the basic element, the main element of industrial revolution in uh, United Kingdom and France. But where it started in England or United Kingdom? Not necessarily in England. Uh, one student is asking industrial revolution 16th century or 13th it is 16th century my dear friend 13th century it was Italian Renaissance which was centered around Florence do not bother about these details this you will get in any case now what I wanted to emphasize today is that there is not one history of sociology today. In case you exclude H. E. Barnes and introduction to the history of sociology, which is an edited book, more than 3000 pages edited book, not in use today. In case you omit that book, there is no book which gives you an introduction to sociology because there is not one sociology, there are multiple sociologies in different countries. For example, I told you yesterday that August Kuhn's coined the term sociology in 1838 in the book Positive Philosophy, it does not mean that sociology originated only in France or 
only with the writing of Agas Kunt. Even in France, there are many historians. For example, there is a very popular introduction and uh, this is, I think, available uh, in ebook form and it will be provided to you by tomorrow with other core readings. All the readings will be provided to this group in the e-book format, the book, not just the link, the whole book will be provided to you positively by tomorrow. Therefore, do not worry about uh, reading materials or do not worry about elementary details. Even if you miss a particular sentence or, 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 or a, a, a sentence or a word or a term, do not worry about it because I will be repeating it in the course of my lectures, not necessarily uh, today, but usually theory cannot be taught uh, without repeating the earlier things. It is more or less like mathematics, which some of you must have studied in your school, but I know most students think that mathematics is difficult. But do you know what is the view of August Kont about mathematics? He said, mathematics is the most simple science available on earth. And what is the most difficult science according to August Kont? Sociology. Therefore, first of all, you must have some sort of reverence, some sort of respect for yourself that you are studying the most difficult science on earth in perhaps one of the most uh, eudite centers which is teaching sociology today in the global village. Uh, we, uh, we are not claiming we are the best. We are only claiming we are the most systematic, most honest and most eurydite center of sociology or allied sciences in the global village today and I mean it literally. Now what I want to emphasize today is that uh, that Raymond Arrow in main currents of sociological thought writes Montesquieu, who was born in 1689 and who died in 1755, as the founding father of sociology in France. Secondly, he also discusses about another person, Tukeville, uh, who was born in 1805 and who died in 18. 55. And then he discusses about August Kunt, who was born on 1798 and who died in 1857. And then he comes to Emile Durkheim, who was born in 1858 and who died in 1917. What does it mean? That although most introductory textbooks which some of you must have read in your graduation or undergraduation tells you that Agas Kunt is the father of sociology and he was influenced by a person called Saint Simon or Saint Simon. In French he is called Simon, in English he is written as Simon. Now, but Raymond Arrow has a different view. Who is Raymond Arrow? Uh, he is a Jewish sociologist of France who differs fundamentally with Talcott Parsons. And uh, I have uh, told you about Parsons' book, The Structure of Social Action in two volumes. When the book was written, he, the book was written in uh, 1937 and then uh, there were uh, three editions. 
फर्स्ट एडिशन नाइनटीन थर्टी सेवन सेकेंड एडिशन नाइनटीन फोर्टी नाइन एंड थर्ड एडिशन नाइनटीन सिक्सटी एट बिफोर हिज सेकेंड एडिशन दैट इज नाइनटीन फोर्टी नाइन बुक आई टोल्ड यू इट वॉज हैरी एल्बर बार्स बुक एंड इंट्रोडक्शन टू द हिस्ट्री ऑफ सोशियोलॉजी which was taught as the most authentic introduction to sociology anywhere in the world but what happened by 1950 after writing 30 published books and 100 essays the reputation of harry elmer barnes became controversial and he became a professional pariah under the growing under the growing influence of talcott parsons why because when the book was published 1937 the second world war was still going on and talcott parsons was not even a minor name in american sociology the question is why there are two reasons one usually it is uh, discussed without much alarm that it is friend boas who is the father of american sociology now who was friend boas he was a german sociologist who was trained under adolf bastian or bastian now adolf bastian is regarded as the father of german sociology and he was born in 1826 and he died in 1905 and he survived primarily by his students primarily friend boas the father of american sociology therefore the american sociology is rooted in german sociology and there are two important figures number 1 friend boas and number 2 talcott parsons now friend boas brought the german sociology of Adolf Bastian, who was influenced by a very important figure in German Renaissance, J. G. Herder, or just simply Herder, H. E. R. D. E. R, who was born in 1744 and who died in 1803. Now what I want to emphasize is that there is a German sociology which is rooted in Herder Herder's philosophy of language and philosophy of society and philosophy of man and the person who used the Herder's insight in sociology for the first time was Adolf Bastian the father of american sorry the father of german sociology and the most celebrated sociologist till date in germany is a person called ferdinand tonnig who wrote a book which is translated into english by different titles for example some people called it community and associations but today by general agreement it is translated as community and society i will say ferdinand tonnig is the greatest sociologist who was born on earth till date but he did not taught in uh, i am just using three names my dear friends do not get worried i am requesting all of you again and again one is adolf bastian a d o l f bastian b a s 
T I A N Bastion, then J G Harder H E R D E R, and then Ferdinand Tony T O double N I E S. The name of the book is Community and Society. Now Ferdinand Tony is important also because he was not only the greatest sociologist after August Kunt, he was also a founder of German Sociological Association. Therefore, he founded the German Sociological Association, which became the ideal type of sociological associations in France, England, United States of America, Italy, India, Japan, China, and elsewhere. Now, why he is not taught? Because Besides the book written by or edited by Barnes, H E Barnes, B A R N E S, Barnes, he is not mentioned in the two most celebrated introduction to sociology by Talcott Parsons, The Structure of Social Action, or Raymond Arrow, Raymond Arrow's the main currents of sociological thought. This is Raymond Aron's books. And the dictionary which I use is this. But I believe Dictionaries are not very reliable in sociology. Therefore, when I was a student, I consulted the multi-volume encyclopedia of social sciences. And today, I use this book. The Social Science Encyclopedia edited by Adam Cooper, K-U-P-E-R, and Jessica Cooper, K-U-P-E-R. Some people pronounce as Cooper also. Do not get fussy about pronunciations. Now, This is second edition, uh, second volume, and the, uh, both are from third edition. And he, in the first volume, Parsons uh, discusses Marshall, Pareto, and Durkheim, and the second volume only Weber. Therefore, Talcott Parsons is partial to Max Weber. And Raymond Arrow, this is volume one. He discusses Montesquieu, Auguste Comte, Karl Marx, Alex de Tocqueville. That is uh, four sociologists and then three more sociologists in second volume. Raymond Aron's second volume where he discusses three authors and they are Emile Durkheim, Wilfred Pareto and Max Weber. Now this gentleman, Raymond Darrow, he is partial to Wilfred Pareto and he derives both Karl Marx and Emile Durkheim. The other person, Talcott Parsons, eulogizes both Emile Durkheim, Raymond Darrow, but he overestimates the third person. Uh, who 
is considered his mentor, namely Max Weber. Now what to do? I will try to give you a very neutral comparative perspective of social thinkers to you and uh, you can uh, rely on the text themselves. There is no need to read the you know, interpretation given by Raymond Aron or Anthony Giddens or Talcott Parsons. These are the so-called uh, popular introductions. Uh, of course, you should not read uh, popular uh, books written by people like Ritzer, etc. They are non-academic book, uh, which in North India is called Kunji, you know, guest paper, you know, uh, the pamphlets which uh, students prepare before the exam. You should read the original book written by the three authors, namely uh, Emile Durkheim, Karl Marx and uh, Max Weber. If I am saying he is overestimated, it does not mean that my version is more correct than the version of Talcott Parsons or Raymond Arrow. I am only trying to underline that do not get influenced by the interpretations given either by me or by Talcott Parsons or by Raymond Aro, rather read the original book which will be provided in this course and all your answers and arguments must be around the sentences and paragraphs and the concepts which are more important than Weber's, both Max and Alfred. Now, which book of George Simmel should be definitely read by sociology student in their, life, uh, in their lifetime? I told about Ferdinand Tony's book, Community and Society. In the same way, George Simmel had got a book which I will show you first and then talk about. This is the book, my dear friends, Philosophy of Money, unless and until you read this book, you will not understand much of the arguments given by Max Weber and Karl Marx. Yes. Emil Durkheim is somebody who can be read independently. What does it mean? The three scholars, Karl Marx, Max Weber and Emil Durkheim, they represent three styles of writing. I told you among the three, only Emile Durkheim was trained as a sociologist and it was he who founded the first journal of sociology anywhere in the world, any sociology. The other two, namely Karl Marx, was a philosopher and he was influenced by Hegel, H-E-G-E-L, Hegel or Hegel, the great German philosopher. But later on, that is after 1848's debacle, I told you there was, they, both of them, Karl Marx and his friend and collaborator, Frederick Engels, they were leading uh, a movement, a protest movement, which, you know, turned ugly and it was called a revolution, but it was finally suppressed by the French regime in 1948 and both had to 
leave France and they settled in England. Therefore, although Karl Marx is a German intellectual, primarily trained in philosophy, but out of interest he became a student of classical political economy founded by people associated with the Scottish Enlightenment. Now this is a term which is not very popular and some of you must be, you know, listening it for the first time. Who are the people who founded the Scottish uh, uh, Enlightenment? Uh, there are four people. The most important person in this group was a, you know, uh, philosopher and political economist whose name is David Hume. And the second is a person called Adam Smith. Now what is the difference between the two? David Hume who is primarily known as a philosopher, wrote much more work, wrote much more on the themes of political economy and today he is regarded as a greater, greater political economist than Adam Smith. He was born in 1711 and he died in 1776. The second person, Adam Smith, was born a little later in 1723 and he died in 1790. And both were great friends. Both influenced each other in the same way in which Karl Marx and Frederick Engels influenced each other or <coughs> Emile Durkheim and his nephew Marshall Moss influenced each other. Now, what makes these three people and the fourth was Adam Ferguson? He was a historian. He was born in 1723, uh, the same year in which Adam Smith was born. But he lived longer and unlike uh, Adam Smith who died in 1790 or David Hume who died in 1776, he lived until 1816. Now, I gave you the significance of 1815 when Napoleon was defeated. Now, what I am trying to argue is that these four people, three, uh, David Hume, Adam Smith, Adam Ferguson and J. Wheeler, who was born in 1735 and who died in 1780, he was primarily a literary critic, art critic. In case you exclude these three people or four people, the other historians of modernity in Europe give you a very, very linear picture of rise of modernity in Europe from 13th century to 18th century. Now, in case some of you are interested in knowing the state of the world in 18th century, today a book is available for you. It is written by a Latin American sociologist. His name is Andre Gunder 
फ्रैंक ए जी फ्रैंक आंद्रे गुंडर फ्रैंक हु वॉज अर्लियर इंफ्लुएंस्ड बाय कार्ल मार्क्स एंड ही इज ए बीटर क्रिटिक ऑफ टालकोट पार्सन मॉडल ऑफ मॉडर्नाइजेशन He does not agree with the theory of pattern variables given by Talcott Parsons in sociology. Rather, he, with two other friends, Paul Baran and Samir Amin. Andre Gunder Frank, Paul Baran, B A R A N, and Samir Amin, S A M I R, Amin, A M I N. The three of them made an alternative discourse about modernization, development, and underdevelopment. What is distinctive about the book I am referring to now is that this book is a departure in the life of not only Andre Gunder Frank but also the history of social sciences in the global village. The name of the book is Reorient, R E hyphen Orient, O R I E N T, Orient. Reorient is a book which is as important as Das Capital of Karl Marx or The Division of Labor in Society by Ibai Durkheim. or the philosophy of money by george simmel or economy and society by max weber what he said andre gunder frank said that the europeans have given a very distorted view of world history now although he is not acknowledging the a scottish enlightenment both are making similar statements and what is the statement that Until 18th century, I'm quoting Andre Gunder Frank's Reorient. This book is easily available, and you can read the summary of the book on the internet. I'm just giving the introduction. I'm he is not part of your course, therefore do not worry about the arguments. I'm just introducing you to. the multiple paths through which sociology had emerged in the global village yeah andre gunder frank is telling that until 18th century india was the richest country of the world followed by china rather he said both countries competed with each other china and india both competed with each other the way england and france competed with each other in 19th century 
और the neto powers competed with each other sorry the neto power and the soviet bloc the first world and the second world competed with each other after the second world war now what they are trying to say is that there is not narrative continuity in the development of societies on planet earth i will repeat according to andre gunder frank as well as people like david hume adam smith adam ferguson and j miller there is no narrative continuity of development from most simple to most complex from the savage society to the developed civilization of europe rather there are these continuities what does it mean until 18th century the non european countries were much developed much literate much healthy or healthy than the european countries therefore the weberian thesis is a bogus thesis that it is protestant ethic which spread the spirit of capitalism in europe and protestant ethic and the spirit of european capitalist enterprise is unique in history they also say that development of european bureaucracy in 19th century was also not a unique phenomenon in world history rather the chinese aristocracy which was rooted in confucian ethos was a much more successful positive oriented optimistic bureaucratic chain than the european bureaucratic model which weber himself calls iron cage gives a very pessimistic view of human condition on earth what does it mean he is claiming indirectly implicitly or the book has the latent latent function if we borrow from r k martin manifest function and latent function the book the reorient has the latent function of claiming that it is not only in france it is not only in germany it is not only in england it is not only in italy it is not only in america it is not only in soviet union but in asiatic countries as well in latin american countries as well in african countries as well there are parallel developments of understanding society systematically although dates may differ now i will make the last point i told you august kunt is regarded as the father of french sociology in the same way b k sarkar binay kumar sarkar 
is regarded as the father of Indian sociology. And if the most celebrated work of August Kunt is Positive Philosophy, which was published in 1838, B.K. Sarkar also published a celebrated work, although there are many others, which is called The Positive Background of Indian Sociology. Sorry, The Positive Background of Hindu Sociology. He is not using the term Indian Sociology, rather he is using the term Hindu Sociology. And what is similar in both the works, Positive Philosophy of August Kunt and Positive Background of Hindu Sociology of B.K. Sarkar is that both consider sociology as a hard science, much more developed than physics, mathematics, chemistry, biology, geology, or other sciences. He said, both August Kunt and B.K. Sarkar, that sociology is a synthetic science which is based on all the existing sciences before the birth of sociology in 19th century around 1830s. Not exactly 1838, but 1830. Now, who is the father of uh, the British sociology? The British sociology was founded by a person called Herbert Spencer. H-E-R-B-E-R-T. Spencer, S-P-E-N-C-E-R, who was born in 1820, and who died in 1895. Now, he was influenced by a person called Charles Darwin, who wrote his celebrated book, Origin of Species, in 1859. And after reading this book, the Origin of Species in 1859, Herbert Spencer wrote in 1864 a book called Principles of Biology. This is regarded as the foundational book of social Darwinism which was the main stream sociology until 1920s in England. What I am trying to say is that in, in, in Germany, sociology is rooted in linguistic philosophy of Herder and in France, August Kohn's sociology is rooted in physics. In England, sociology of Herbert Spencer is rooted in biology. Thank you.